Okay, continuing in the chapter, Physical Phenomena. I was kind of rushing through um, the reading toward the end, so I'm going to begin back up at the beginning of the last paragraph in um, the last video. I have seen ectoplasm produced under severe test conditions that would render faking an impossibility. Mediums have been thoroughly searched before the seance. Others, clad only in a bathing costume, have been secured, securely bound and held by people in the seance, while ex ectoplasm has been produced just the same. Strange things have happened in these physical seances. Sometimes people have been raised from the floor without anyone touching them. It is recorded that people have floated out of a window and back through another. This is called levitation and has been witnessed by numerous crowds of people at various times and places and can hardly be put down to the imagination of the minority. Another form of physical phenomena is telekinesis. This is what objects, this is when objects are moved around the room articles carried through walls and locked doors without being damaged in any way, musical instruments played without anyone touching them, presents of flowers and jewelry given to sitters. Mediums have been known to free themselves from bonds during trance conditions while others can touch red hot coals without being burnt. These miracles are performed not only in the Congo by witch doctors, but in England. Satan is producing miracles and showing many signs and wonders that are strong in deceptive power. The gifts of the working of miracles and faith are counterfeited by demons, a challenge to the true Church of Christ. Physical phenomena serves many purposes so far as Satan is concerned, and he will use his counterfeit of these two supernatural gifts to suit his own ends, and in order that people may think that the operation of the counterfeit is really, quote unquote, divine. Through this type of mediumship, people have been miraculously saved from danger, accidents, and death. One medium was grasped, grasped by spirit hands just as she was falling down a precipice and saved. Man's needs can be met by the ability of the spirits to provide food for the hungry. The dead can be raised through this time of type of mediumship, as will be seen in the chapter dealing with materialization. One would only have to see the counterfeit in operation to realize that the nine gifts of the spirits are for use in the church today. It is quite obvious to the child of God that Satan would not go to so much trouble to copy the divine gifts with such accuracy if God had withdrawn them from the church in these last days. Satan is able to blind the eyes of people into believing that spiritualism is the true religion because they have what seem to be spirit, gifts of the spirit, whereas the church is either sleeping or denying the necessity of these supernatural gifts. Let me interject here. There are also churches that are calling themselves churches of Christ or churches that follow Christ but are using demonic gifts. So much discernment is needed. Let me just, I just have to interject that. Just because you hear miracles are happening at a church that calls itself Christian and says it is not spiritualist is not a good way to test the spirits. It, it takes more discernment than that. Okay, back to the book. Surely the sh church should stand four square on the word of God who commands that we be filled with the Holy Ghost. If demons are able to work such miracles through mediums, 
How much more would the Holy Spirit work through the true church of believers with mighty signs and wonders following those that believe? As we progress further into physical mediumship, we come to quote-unquote transfiguration. Although the majority of mediums have to wait a long time before they reach perfection in this direction, it is really one of the more common types of physical phenomena. Transfiguration circles, or seances, are almost invariably held in the medium's own home, although there are occasional open meetings for a limited number of sitters at different spiritualist churches. Visitors can sit either in the circle or in rows, and the medium will be seated in full view of the sitters. Prayers are offered and lights are turned out while a small spotlight is shown onto the face of the medium who will then go into a trance. The opening prayers, of course, depend on whether the sitters believe in the value of prayer or not. Otherwise, the proceedings carry on without it. Although, as a general rule, the mediums go into trance, it does not imply that it's impossible for physical phenomena to take place without trans condition as successful results have been ob obtained either way. Sitters will anxiously wait, watching the medium, and after a time a mist will be noticed which almost obliterates his face. Gradually, out of the mist appears features that are entirely different from that of the medium. It can be the face of a woman, man, or child. The face thus materialized will look in the direction of the one of the sitters in the meeting who will then acknowledge it. Sitters who know the rules of seances or ordinary spiritualist meetings will not give any information to the communicating spirit in case it is not a good spirit and the manifestation is desired to be as evidential as possible. They will not just call out to the spirit, Are you such and such a person? It will be left to give its own name and proof of identity without help or coaxing. The remarkable thing about transfiguration is the fact that when the face of the spirit appears, the eyes take on the actual color of the dead person that the spirit states itself to be, regardless of the color of the medium's own eyes, which in any case, remain closed during the seance. Various faces will appear, one after another. Some will be guides of different nationalities, speaking in different tones and languages, and messages and conversations take place. Tears are shed at, tears are shed at the many reminders of the fact that these spirits are supposed to be loved ones. Who are watching over those left behind on earth. Tears of joy, tears over the fact of forgiveness expressed by these spirits toward a particular sitter who may have wronged them while on earth. This forgiveness is a great point on the other side and very consoling to somebody left on this side with a slightly guilty conscience that would no doubt follow them the rest of their lives apart from the contact of these spirits. Such kind words are spoken on both sides, by both spirits and sitters, and many blessings are passed from one to another, so that it all seems to be of one accord with love thought going out towards the medium, so that he may have more power. When the phenomenon has finished, the medium gives permission for the lights to be turned on, and the sitters disperse to their homes where they're able to meditate over the goodness of the spirits in allowing such wonderful things to happen through earthly vessels. How many precious souls fall victim to these seducing spirits? The devil has inspired his blinded followers to have complete faith in the spirits, and because of their simple faith and trust, he obliges them with miracles and signs following. Another type of medium, mediumship is direct voice, which requires darkness, but here again some attempts have been successful in ordinary light. 
Direct voice mediums are generally referred to as trumpet mediums. As for this purpose, a small trumpet is placed in the center of the circle. This trumpet is painted with a luminous paint to enable it to be seen in the dark. After the lights are turned out, the medium will go into a trance, if he's a trance medium, and his guide will enter the body to give instructions to the sitters in case there are many newcomers ignorant of this type of phenomenon. If the medium is not a trance medium, he will make it his business to explain the procedure before the seance. Part of the explanation is that the ectoplasm used for this purpose will extend from the medium's own body to the trumpet and will form a rod which is referred to as an ectoplasmic rod. It will be mentioned that the trumpet will then rise from the floor and float around the room. Eventually, the voice of the spirit will be heard speaking through the trumpet. The ectoplasm will become solid around the vocal cord of the spirit who is trying to communicate in this way, thus enabling it to speak. The trumpet is for it to speak through so that it can be heard. On no account must the trumpet be touched without permission. It should be mentioned also that some direct voice mediums do not use the trumpet for this purpose, but rather an ectoplasmic voice mold. But this is not a very common occurrence and most of, most of them use the trumpet. The sitters wait in silence sitting with legs uncrossed and hands open to extend power towards the medium who needs all they can give. They will then be commanded to sing to stimulate vibrations. The room will become cold and the atmosphere tense. Suddenly there will be a tapping sound on the trumpet. The guide explains that spirits are approaching and the trumpet itself will be seen to rise rapidly from the floor floating around the seance room. It will float as high as the ceiling, far beyond the reach of anyone, past the sitters, missing them by inches, and at such an incredible speed that it's a wonder that nothing gets broken. The trumpet will fly past the sitters, dodging in and out, first high, then low, far and near. One sitter was once heard to remark that the things must have had eyes to see where they were going into the darkness. Truly, there are eyes behind it that guide it on its pathway, but they belong to the prince of power of this world. After careening around the room for a few moments, the, si the sitters, still sitting, around, sitting as volubly as they can, oh, still singing as volubly as they can, the trumpet stops dead in front of one of them, and a voice speaks. The voice will say to whom it belongs and give satisfactory evidence as to its identity, and there will follow a short conversation. After that, there will be other spirits speaking, all purporting to be different personalities. I remember one that stated itself to be the spirit of the late Dame Clara Butt singing Abide With Me with such accuracy and style that would only have been possible by that great singer herself. It would have been humanly possible to imitate such a unique voice except by, except by, excuse me, I, this, I think there might be a typo in this sentence. I'm just gonna reread it and um, let you figure it out. It would have been humanly impossible to imitate such a unique voice except by supernatural power. But the demons know us so intimately that they can perfectly well imitate our voices and manners. There, I read it correctly that time. At some of these seances, mediums will use as many as four or five trumpets at once, all flying around in different directions without knocking against each other all speaking in different voices at the same time, which does more or less prove the integrity of the medium, as he could hardly be speaking in four or five different voices simultaneously. The seance may last for an hour or more before the power will gradually die down. 
The trumpets will move at a slower pace, getting nearer and nearer to the floor and performing a perfect landing on the exact spots where they stood before the commencement of the seance. Is not this indeed a miracle? Is not this certainly supernatural? The only answer is, yes, it certainly is supernatural. Faking is possible, no doubt, but in all other cases, no doubt, as in all other cases, but not in as many instances as, as these things occur. There would be no point in such wholesale trickery. Some spiritualists claim that when the voice of God was heard at the baptism of the Lord in Jordan, saying, This is my beloved, beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, it was by the manifestation of direct voice, mediumship. Where in this case was the trumpet? Where was the voice mold? Where was the dark room and the singing sitters to keep up vibrations? Even though we know God's judgment on spiritualism, we have sufficient evidence of supernatural power to convince us of our need of a divine filling of the Holy Ghost. If we have not experienced this, the evidence given above should cause us to seek this filling and the gifts of the Spirit, which the Lord has promised to those that believe. We can indeed thank God that at, that at this present time there are those of his children who stand firm upon his promises, and he is confirming their faith with the signs following. No wonder the devil desires to counterfeit the gifts to such an extent and to mislead people who might otherwise follow the true light which comes from God alone, by Christ Jesus. Let us see to it that our whole trust is in him who shall teach us to discern good from evil and the divine from the satanic. And that is the end of this chapter. There's just two more chapters left in the book.